Okay, the next couple problems are examples where we have to find what C is, and we usually call those problems initial condition problems because they will give us some initial information to find out what C is. Normally, there's two steps in the process. The first step is to do an integral. The second step is to evaluate C. So in these cases, you're going to start with step one, where you, you find the antiderivative of x squared dx. And that's a pretty straightforward process. Um, the antiderivative for x squared is going to be x to the power of 3 divided by 3, because you add 1 to the power and you divide by the same number. This is power rule, plus c, where c is some sort of a real number. Okay, So this is usually the end of step one, is just finding the antiderivative. Step two is where you find out what c is. So how do you find out what C is? You use this information, okay? So now, in this problem, they called the x squared the f prime of x, that was called um, x squared. And then what we found just now is the x cubed over three plus C, that's what they are calling in this problem, just a regular f of x. And we said at the beginning of this section that if you wanna remove an apostrophe, if you wanna remove the derivative, you just do an antiderivative. This is the reason why we're calling one of them f prime and the other one f of x. So now they are giving me that f of negative one is equal to two. So this means that if you replace x with negative one, that's what this, this part right there means, you should end up with a two at the end. So whatever your answer is, it should be a two. So here we go. Um, if I plug in negative one for all the x's in the problem, not the c's, just the x's, then I should end up with the answer, which is, in this particular problem, 2. So that's what I should get. And again, this equation is an equation that only has one variable, the variable c, so it should hopefully be easy to solve. Negative 1 to the power of 3 is going to be negative 1 over 3, and plus c equals a 2. And so now I'm just going to move the 1 third across, and so it's going to be 2 plus 1 third. So in other terms, this is going to be 7 thirds. So that's what my C is. So finally, we can say that the answer of this question is the function f of x that is written as x cubed over 3 plus 7 over 3. Because C is now 7 over 3, I get to plug it in. And that's the answer that they're looking for. Let's try this one more time with example number six. So again, in step number one, you are gonna have to do an integral of the expression x plus one times x minus two. And again, in this problem, there is multiplication, and because there's multiplication, you are required to FOIL basically first, and then integrate. There is no product rule for antiderivatives. You always have to multiply it up. So x times x is x squared and then negative 2x, then 1x, then minus 2, and dx. Let's combine like terms to make the problem a little bit easier. In this case, the negative 2x plus 1x are like terms. So we can combine them to get negative 1x minus 2. And we can now do a separate integrals, one for the first one, and one for the second one. And notice I'm breaking up the numbers right away. So that's because the property number um, two basically says it doesn't matter if there's a plus or minus, you could just ignore and do part by part, piece by piece, and then the numbers don't really matter, so you can pull them out of the integral. And so at this point, this is gonna be just simply x cubed over three minus one x squared over two minus two x plus c. So that whole thing that we just wrote is what they're calling this problem the little f of x. And the original thing that was there on the paper is what we're calling f prime of x. So if you do the antiderivative of the derivative, you get the regular function without apostrophes, without derivatives, basically. So now we are going to go ahead and do step number two, where we can use the initial information. We know that f of 1 equals to 3. So that means if you replace all the x's with 1, you should see a 3 at the end. So I believe in this case, the C turns out to be 31 over six. And so we're basically finished. Let's just write down the final answer. And the final answer is the function where you replace C with the correct number, 31 over six. Like I said though, this is a very rare kind of problem. We don't do this very often. So, you know, if you have a test with like 30 questions, you may have to do this once or twice on a test, but the rest of them will just be regular integration where you leave the C as a letter C.